Hello and welcome back to my channel. On this video, I'm gonna talk about the different books that I read in the month of November. I was able to get through 26 books throughout this past month and uh, had some really good reading. And so I thought I would just talk through those books. Also keep an eye out for my upcoming video on my December TBR pile, what I'm hoping to read in the last month of the calendar year. So um, I started the month with the first book in the Divergent series. And this is a book that I had read before. I'd actually read the first couple in the series, but I had not read all three. And then there's also a series of short stories um, called Four that tell some of the scenes from Four's perspective, the character Four. And so I ended up reading all four of those throughout the month. That was really, really fun. And it definitely made me want to go watch the movies as well, which I think I ended up seeing those instead of reading the book, the final book in the series. Um, I actually think that YA dystopian fiction is a really nice distraction from pretty much whatever else you have going on in your life. So if you're needing uh, something that will kind of like take you away, uh, I highly recommend this series. I thought it was really great. I also picked up a book called Much Ado About You by Samantha Young. And this is a book that I was drawn to because it's about a woman who runs away to another country because there is a bookstore that you can kind of take a vacation and run a bookstore. And this is something she's always wanted to do. She does a lot of work in um, like the editorial world. And then she um, meets kind of the local townspeople in this town where the bookstore is, and of course has a romance. Um, a lot of really fun kind of literary references throughout this book and definitely would pick up this author again um, and would love to kind of see what else she has. Next, I picked up a book called Mr. Malcolm's List by Suzanne Elaine. And this is a book that I picked up because I actually saw that it had been adapted into a movie on one of the streaming services I have. And I had never heard of it and I didn't know what it was. Very quick read. Uh, listen to it on audio and basically it's the story of a woman who goes and visits her friend and um, the friend is upset because she was trying to be in a relationship with this man um, and they were kind of courting and um, the the friend wants to kind of like um, have revenge on this man by uh, having her friend like pretend to be interested in him and then she's really not and um, the reason that she's upset is because this, this man, Mr. Balcom, has a list of what he's looking for in a partner and she does not meet the items on this list. Um, so she's kind of trying to like get her friend to pretend that she's all these things on this list so that she can then break his heart. Um, and of course, uh, they are having a romance um, throughout this story. I thought this was really charming. I have not watched the adaptation yet, but I'm interested to see what that looks like. Then I picked up a book called The Brilliant Life of Eudora Honeyset by Annie Lyons. This book reminded me a lot of The Man from Uva um, if you're, by Frederick Bachman, if you're familiar with that book. It's basically about a woman who's coming to the end of her life and wants to kind of intentionally end her life based on kind of what she's experienced thus far. She's kind of ready to be done uh, with the world. And then she meets a young person um, and gets kind of pulled back into having relationships. Um, I thought that this book did a great job of going back and forth in time to kind of show earlier parts of this woman's life and how um, it kind of those those different experiences that she had as a young person have impacted, you know, kind of who she is as an adult. Um, so really liked that one as well. I had on my list a book called One Step Too Far by Lisa Gardner, and I realized that this is book number two in a series and I had not read book number one. So the next book that I read is called Before She Disappeared. Um, it is the first book in the Frankie Elkin series, and it's basically about a woman who finds missing people. And then um, I followed that up with One Step Too Far. I will say I, I enjoyed both books, but I loved One Step Too Far because it takes place in kind of the wilderness. It's basically about someone who goes missing in the wilderness and how people are, are trying to find that person over a series of years. Um, I thought it was great. Uh, the first book, it takes place in more of an urban setting where she's um, looking for a missing teenager. Also thought it was good, but I like the second one a lot better. Then I picked up uh, another book called Learning by Heart, Teachings to Free the Creative Spirit. Um, and this is one that uh, is basically a book about teaching art. It's about a woman who is a nun 
and she's teaching art. And I actually found it to be um, really interesting. I like books about teaching. I like books about art. I don't consider myself necessarily to be kind of a traditional artist, but I'm really interested in people who practice art and art making. Um, and so this book was a fun kind of um, stretch for me because I don't typically read books like this. Then I picked up a book called All Good People Here by Ashley Flowers. I really enjoyed this book. I don't want to give too much away, but I will say that if you're someone who likes books that have kind of a, a clean wrap up in the end, this book does not have that. It has kind of, I guess you could call it like a cliffhanger, but I would say like an extreme cliffhanger. Um, I don't think the author is planning to write a second book here, um, but I really, really like this. It's basically about a woman who is investigating a cold case that happened when she was young and um, the crime is kind of repeated again when she's an adult and she's trying to figure out what happened. I thought it was great, but I think a lot of people are kind of torn on the ending. I actually really liked it. Then I picked up Lessons in Chemistry by Bonnie Garmus. This is a book that everyone has been talking about and I also read a fun review of it in the New York Times. Um, this is basically about a woman who is a chemist and um, she is a chemist during a time when women are not typically chemists. And so she's dealing with a lot of sexism in the workplace and she ends up um, creating a cooking show um, through kind of a random series of events. And she uses chemistry in the cooking show and kind of uses the cooking show as a way to empower other women. Um, I thought this book was delightful. Also listened to it on audio and really enjoyed it. I would highly recommend that one. Then I picked up a book that I was intrigued by the title. It's called Renewal from Crisis to Transformation in Our Lives, Work, and Politics by Annie Marie Slaughter. I really knew nothing about this book, but I love the concept of renewal, and so I decided to pick it up. Um, I will say this book was a lot more political than anything else, and I mean, that's fine. Not really a book for me. I, I felt like it got a lot into politics, and I was actually helping, hoping for more of kind of the personal stories of the author. Those are included, but maybe not as much as I would have liked. So if you're interested in kind of understanding um, how renewal comes into like the current state of politics in America, maybe you would want to pick something like this up. Then I picked up a book by Michelle Sager called The Joy Choice. And this is a book that I actually really enjoyed. It's basically about how you can release your own expectations of how you engage in things like exercise and eating. Um, and, and basically what she talks about is how do you connect your everyday choices to like a larger vision of who you want to be, but also how do you do it in a way that is not kind of informed by like negative self-talk or self-judgment. And um, so I appreciated the message and, and kind of some of the examples of what she included in this book. Then I picked up uh, Less is Lost by Andrew Sean Greer. This is the second book in the Arthur Less series. Um, this is a book that has Arthur traveling again. Uh, if you know anything about the first book, he goes on kind of a world tour to avoid the fact that his ex-partner is getting married and he doesn't want to go to the wedding. Um, this book is kind of similar. He kind of goes on another world tour. I will say that I, I liked the first book better. I felt like maybe it was just because it felt a little bit more new and original. Uh, the first book, I think, also won a Pulitzer. Um, and the second one was fine. You know, I enjoyed revisiting the character, but I would definitely say start with the first one because I, I like that one a lot better. Then I picked up The Lonely City Adventures in the Art of Being Alone um, by Olivia Lang. And this is a book that was also about art um, in a deep way and the concept of like solitude, loneliness, and particularly in New York. It talks about a lot of artists that are local to New York um, and how the author really had kind of like personal connections to their work and this concept of loneliness. Also talks quite a bit about kind of the queer scene in New York um, over a, a period of decades. Um, I probably wouldn't have picked this book up other than I kind of challenged myself to read it this month. And I'm glad that I did. I always like to read things that are kind of outside of my typical genre choices. The next book that I read is called Lease on Love by Fallon Ballard. And it has a really kind of fun premise in that you have a woman who is on a dating app and she's on a roommate app and she shows up to an interview to be someone's roommate. And then she thinks that she's showing up for a date and ends up actually being the roommate of this person um, that she meets on this app. Um, this was an interesting book about people who are kind of recovering from various forms of grieving and how they engage with other people, you know, based on um, the time they need to take to grieve things that are going on in their lives. Um, I, I liked 
certain characters in this book. I didn't like others as much. I have seen this book rated a kind of a number of different ways by people. I ended up giving this like three out of five stars. I thought it was kind of original and interesting, um, but didn't have the depth of some of the other books that I've been reading lately in the same kind of um, romantic comedy genre. Okay, then I picked up a book called Lily Bennett's Bucket List by Katherine Dyson. I really enjoyed this book. The premise of this book is you have a woman who is getting divorced from her husband. She's in midlife and she goes to the grocery store and in the cart, she finds a bucket list by a woman named Lily Bennett. And she decides that she's going to follow this bucket list to try to be kind of more adventurous and maybe even to try to win her ex back. Um, as she goes about trying to figure out like how to do this list, um, she is on kind of online dating apps and her daughter uh, rewrites her description on the online dating app to say that she's going to be doing this bucket list. And she has this man reach out um, who very kind of uh, platonic friendship, you know, like wants to engage with her on this bucket list. Um, and so they end up going on all of these adventures together and it's super fun. Really enjoyed this book. Always love the concept of something like a bucket list. And so really, really enjoyed this. The next book that I read is a book called Girl Forgotten by Karen Slaughter. And this is a book that is the second in a series of a main character named Andrea Oliver. Um, Karen Slaughter is a, an author that I've read for a very long time. She has a couple other long running series that I am um, current, currently current on. I, I've read all the books in those series. She writes, I would say, psychological thrillers and some of them are quite dark. Um, and so I just would kind of offer that warning. In this particular one, it's about a girl who was killed and um, there's a woman, so this girl was killed kind of a while ago and then this woman in present day is investigating it. So it's kind of a cold case murder that she's investigating. And um, we kind of find out, of course, throughout the course of the book, what actually happened to this girl who was a high schooler, she was pregnant. And so there's all kinds of red herrings kind of throughout the book about who was interested in, in having her die. Um, I really enjoy Karen Slaughter. I would say that the series that she writes outside of this one are probably uh, more of a favorite just because I've been reading them for a long time. But it's been interesting to see her kind of expand out and do some of these other books that are a little bit more um, like standalones or that are starting out new series. Okay, then I picked up The Last Flight by Julie Clark. And this is a, a thriller about a woman who's trying to leave an abusive marriage. She goes to the airport, switches tickets with another woman, and um, then the plane that she was supposed to be on crashes. Um, this book was great, super fast read. Um, I don't think I read this on audio. I think I read this as like an ebook and um, I really, really enjoyed it. I would totally pick up another book by this author. Um, I think that she is um, really gifted at kind of keeping you turning the pages and, and this kind of goes back and forth between a couple different character perspectives and I thought it was really, really good. Then I picked up Legend Born by Tracy Dion and this is a book that I had heard a ton about, didn't know much about. Basically, it's kind of a retelling of the Arthurian legends in a college setting in the South and you have a um, female main character who is kind of learning that she has some powers and there's kind of a mythology that's being explored and um, defined in this first book. The second book recently came out and so I was really glad I picked up the first one because I would definitely pick up the second one. I would say if you like Arthurian legends, this might be interesting. Or if you like something that's kind of world building along the lines of like a Harry Potter, this felt very similar to me, probably just because of the age of the characters as well. Um, but really, really enjoyed this one. Okay, I also read this month uh, the couple next books in the Wheel of Time series. So the first one I read was Knife of Dreams. Um, that's number 11 by Robert Jordan. And then I picked up The Gathering Storm, which is number 12. And that is co-written by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson. This series continues to be super interesting. Um, I'm really glad that I challenged myself to read it this year. It's very long. It's very time consuming. I would highly recommend the audio if you're going to try to engage in this challenge um, because it takes a while to kind of get through these books. A lot of them are like seven to a thousand, 700 to a thousand pages. Um, and now I'm, I'm getting ready to wrap up the series before the end of the year. So um, it was really fun to dive into those. I also ended up picking up a book called And There He Kept Her by Joshua Moling. 
I randomly came across this in the new book section of my library and I, I had never heard of it and, and so I just decided to pick it up based on the description. This is basically the story of a, a man who lives in kind of a, a cabin that's a little bit off the beaten path and a couple of teenagers come to his house to rob him. They're coming to rob him of his like prescription medication. And when they come to the house, they discover that he has this kind of like secret room off of his garage, which is clearly meant to like keep someone in this room. Um, and so this is kind of how the book starts is they, they find this room, he then confronts them and the story kind of goes on from there. I don't want to give a ton away, but it's basically kind of like a cat and mouse game between this guy and these two teenagers. And then the, there's a cop who's like trying to figure out what happened to these teenagers because they've gone missing. And um, a, a little bit dark in terms of just the content, but I, I thought it was kind of an interesting um, take on this. And it reminded me of this other book, which I'm not gonna, oh, I think it's called The Devil Lights the Candle by Karen Fossum, which is basically about someone who breaks into a woman's house and then um, she like basically fights back and they have this kind of um, fight like within the house and, and he ends up being pushed down the basement stairs and then she's like keeping him in this house. Um, Karen Fossum is a, a Scandinavian author and this book reminded me a lot of that, of basically like turning the table on like who is the criminal and who is the victim. Um, so would highly recommend that if you are interested in that kind of story. Also would highly recommend uh, the Karen Fossum book as well. Okay, and then uh, the last couple of books that I read in the month, I'm um, just looking at my list here to make sure these are actually the last ones I read, yes. Um, I read A Better Man, um, which is a Armand Gamage book number 15 by Louise Penny. And then I read the next book in that series called All the Devils Are Here, number 16 in that series um, by Louise Penny. And I continue to just love where this series is going. I will say that there, now that I'm kind of seeing the arc of like where it's headed, there were a couple of books in the middle where I was like, where is this going? Like with the character development, what is she really trying to do in terms of like long-term character arcs? Um, but now that the, the characters have kind of gone through what were like some troublesome times, it's like swinging back around in a way that's really interesting. Um, so both of these were very interesting. The first one is about a, a woman who disappears and there's kind of a domestic violence storyline that's involved with that. Um, the second one, All the Devils Are Here, is uh, takes place in Paris. And um, there's basically like a, a good friend of their family, of Armand Gabancha's family, is intentionally um, attacked, but they don't know why. And they're kind of trying to figure out what happened. Um, and so it was kind of fun to see this taking place in a different country and, and seeing the series go there as well. So um, some really good series reading this month, some really good standalone reading as well. Um, I really am enjoying all of the reading that I'm doing this year and look forward to sharing with you what is gonna be on my December TBR pile. Uh, but until then, happy reading. Thanks for watching.